Thank God for wrestling. Really? So, yeah. so well, what age did that start? That started in 1986. I was eight years old. It gave me uh, something to focus on, something to strive for, something to be better at. I don't think there's, like I said early on, there's nothing like competing and training and practicing with your boys, like-minded people. And I think at a young age, I was able to grasp that. It made me feel good. Um, at that point in time, sure, playing outside felt great, but nothing was like this. Mm -hmm. it, it made the rest of the day great. So I think that's what inspired me every day to keep training is because there was nothing that made me feel as good as training did. Did you, did you run into any trouble in elementary, in, in high school? Was fighting ever an issue? You know, we move in, I see my brother kind of get picked on and something changed and mm -hmm. then I became the opposite of a bully. And then um, I got bullied myself by once kids started noticing that I wouldn't fight back, they wanted to, and I was a distinguished wrestler at this time and well known, I think that caused some animosity, right? And so then when I wouldn't fight, they picked up on it, the, the ruffians in the, in the school. And uh, yeah, I, I was bullied a little bit before, like so seventh, eighth grade and junior high. And then I moved and then I knew when I moved, I went to a new high school, inner city high school in Portland, Oregon. And, I knew that I had to nip that shit in the bud right away. So mm -hmm. from freshman year on, yeah, if there was, it was time to fight, it was time to go. So you take that experience with Tyron Spong, and I will do that until I die. I'll always stand up to uh, injustice. So I <laughs> learned that at a young age. He, the main goal for my dad was to keep me out of trouble, and uh, he knew sports was the best way to, you know, facilitate that. And, uh, uh, so. Yeah, so we went up to the best program in Oregon and probably in the country for Freestyle Greco, which was the USA uh, Wrestling Cobra Kids Club, high school club, which had a lot of great, great wrestling. Matt Lindland was wrestling there. The, you know, there was just a plethora. So my, my dad moved us to that club, and that was as hard a training as I've ever done. My life was there. And then, um, you know, I was blessed to get a scholarship, which was very hard to get. Um, academically, it's just you're in an inner city school, and... I didn't care about school. <clears throat> they kind of just passed me, but I, once it came down to being eligible for college, I was nowhere close, so there was a lot of struggle to get there. But then I did get in, I qualified, I worked my ass off to get in, and then I wrestled in college. And then I, then I moved to the Olympic Training Center and trained, but I didn't have the right mindset as I did probably as when I got into college. Like, had I even been around the right people when I first started college, I think good things would have happened. Mm -hmm. I was driven, but uh, you know, life happens and you kind of change your mind. I was sitting there, I was friend with my dad, he just sat down one day, we're sitting down at dinner, it was just me and him, he's like, you know, this is the life I've chosen, you know, it made a lot to me, you know, if you, you could go this route, but you know, I think there's still something more for you, you should try this MMA thing out, and sure enough, you know, I lived in Portland at the time, and he's like, Team Quest, is here, why don't you go give it a whirl, go train with Son, Little and guys I grew up with, respecting, and it made sense, and I, yeah, I still had a push. It urged me to do better. So, but it was really that moment there that changed me. Think, yeah, I could do MMA. And after being at Olympic Training Center, which was real helpful, because maybe I didn't think I was a fighter at that point. But then when you're up training with the best in the world and you know it, it gives you that little confidence. And say, yeah, you can do this easy, and it was easy. Wrestling, I got to where I was so calm that I could clearly think of every aspect in the middle of a match. Whereas MMA was 180 miles an hour, and it's still that way for me. I can't slow it down. And that's how that first fight was. And then I was blessed to fight like on a sport fight in the Rose Garden in Portland, Oregon. So the atmosphere was there like right away. So I started in um, June of 07 and then I, I fought uh, in October of 07. Well, what do you think your your main goals and main reasons yeah. for going in at and that maybe point? Maybe it was never about money either. And I think maybe that's another thing that's changed. It's slowly become about money. And mm -hmm. unfortunately it's maybe kind of tainted my whole vision of what athletics and what sport is, maybe just a little bit. Uh, but it was always to be number one in the world. I think being so close to being in the UFC, potentially, for so long, that that's kind of changed me too. It's like, uh, I think I appreciate things more. I've never told anybody this, and I, I want to know. I was not, the, everybody has excuses, man, but I had knee surgery right before that fucking show, and wow. then I broke my leg the first day of that show. I, I fought with a broken leg. My first fight was, um, I, 
I probably trained a month in the five months before that show, four months before that show. Wow. So I was off. I didn't have any bouncing feet. I wasn't faint. I wasn't. Uh, I'm a motherfucking killer, and unfortunately, I finally got a. I had my last three fights on national television, and I was my best self, and that's all right. I could be better, but it's just too bad that at this time in my life, when it's just what it is. But that's all right. You know, you get better from it. You know? But uh, I'm. I like if I could fight right now. I would like to think I'd be. This is the best I've ever felt. Amazingly, at 37. Are you a fighter or are you a martial artist? Yeah, man. I, I guess as a kid, I would have said I'm a fighter. You know, no doubt about that. You know, but as I grew up and I see the beauty in this sport, it's I'm a mixed martial artist, man. Now, and is this something that you're going to be doing for the right. rest of your That's life? Right. You're going to be coaching. You're That's going to a be. Good point. I will be doing this for the rest of my life, uh, some form or another. You know, I'd like to be a coach. I can already start seeing. I didn't want to be a coach for so long because I wanted to be a competitor. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing that uh, coaching is going to be as fun. I'm not quite ready for it, but um, yeah, man, I'll do this for the rest of my life. I'll shadow box until I die. I'll shadow wrestle until I die. I know that. <laughs> what what kind of man do you do you try to be? What kind of man do you respect? Um, I like that question because right, we need more. It's simple, man. I think uh, love your neighbor. Respect people, and that's it. That's that's how you live your life, man. That's what a man is. What kind of father are you? What does it mean to be a father? It's everything. It's given me another. I understand now, like, because you get a little bit bored, <laughs> so they give you that, like, uh, thought of youth. You know, um, that it's everything. It's awesome. It's and it's not easy. It's commitment. It's work. It's loving them. Unconditionally, as my wife said when we first met, I had no idea what the fuck that meant. You know? <laughs> but it is with your kids, man, and you get it right off the bat. You know what that means, but it makes you a better person because you really there's a big trick out there. You know, you could make everything easy in life. You can go get fast food. You know, you can do things that is easy, but is it going to be helpful? So you got to kind of correct yourself. Yeah, it's easier to put them in front of the TV, but you might want to not do that all the time. So yeah, it's commitment. That's the number one thing I get out of being a father. There's been a lot of people out there that have helped me along this way, you know, this path. A lot, a lot of people came to me. In order to make in this world, you need help from others, you know. Uh, but without a doubt, <laughs> who set the tone, who led by example day in and day out is my father, period. Uh, hardest working dude I know to this day. And uh, yeah, all, all on him, dude. He's helped me by far the most. Uh,